The PlayStation Portal. This device has a lot of controversy. Mixed opinions and mixed feelings. Some users love it and some users are hating it. Me personally really love this device and I have great gaming experiences with it in my home situation. But still there are many bad reviews out there. And to be honest I'm not surprised of that. In my opinion the PlayStation Portal is a risky product. Because there is one big and very important factor that Sony can't control. I am of course talking about your internet and Wi-Fi connection. This device has no direct link with your PlayStation 5 and everything is working through your Wi-Fi connection. All gamers provide their own Wi-Fi connection so user experiences will be different. I have been using the PlayStation Portal in various situations and have noticed that the performance easily changes in different Wi-Fi situations. So in this video I would like to highlight a couple points that are essential to get the most out of the PlayStation Portal. I will come up with a review of this product later, but first I wanted to make a video with a few things that you need to take care of to get the best performance from the PlayStation Portal. You must always ensure that your PlayStation 5 is wired with an Ethernet cable. Make sure it is connected directly to your modem, router or wired Wi-Fi point. For example, don't use Wi-Fi extenders to wire up your PlayStation 5 on them. So use a direct cable connection from your modem, router, gigabit switch or wired access point. Even if you have a great Wi-Fi connection with the best possible quality, you will never beat a cable. After you have wired the PlayStation 5, make sure that you set the connection to wired in the network settings and disconnect the Wi-Fi connection. The PlayStation Portal itself only works with Wi-Fi. And that connection is just as important. Make sure you are connected to your modem, router or wired access point and not for example on a wireless Wi-Fi extender. So it is important that you are connected directly to your modem or router or wired Wi-Fi extender. Sony advertises a minimum of a 5 megabit connection but forget about that because I have tested extensively and you definitely need a stable 50 megabytes to have a good connection. The PlayStation Portal does not have Wi-Fi 6, which is a real disadvantage in my opinion. So we have to work with 2.4 or with the 5 GHz antenna. But for a good connection you must be connected to your 5 GHz signal. So make sure you have a modem, router or Wi-Fi point with 5 GHz. And make sure you are in a place where you have full range with your Wi-Fi. Even with one bar less, I notice that it affects the performance. So it is very important that you are connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi signal with a full range. The PlayStation 5 has various video output options and supports resolutions up to 4K with HDR and VRR. You can adjust these settings on the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation Portal itself has a 1080p screen, so it does not support 4K with VRR or HDR. So the best thing you can do is to ensure that these settings are adjusted on the PlayStation 5 so that the PS5 sends a video signal during remote play that is fully supported by the Portal. This is very easy to do. Just go to the video output settings on the PlayStation 5 and change the resolution to 1080p. And make sure VRR, 120Hz and ACR are turned off. I notice that this improves the performance of remote play. The last point is removing the HDMI cable during remote play. I discovered this point by accident. I connected my PlayStation 5 wired to my modem in the living room without connecting it to the TV. Because I did this purely to test remote play, but I discovered that this improved the performance because later with the TV on I noticed that it affected the performance. This is a point I haven't read much about, 
but I have really noticed a difference. So I do recommend that you remove the HDMI cable during remote play. So these were the four points that are, in my opinion, very important for the ultimate experience with the PlayStation Portal. Keep in mind that it is still remote play at the end of the day and you will still feel some lag from time to time. Unfortunately, this is how remote play works. So for example, I don't recommend playing online multiplayer because that will simply be a bad experience with remote play. But with offline games, you will definitely have a fun experience with the PlayStation Portal. And guys, that's it for today's video. If you have any questions about this topic, please let me know it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. For now, thanks for watching and see you the next time.